Hi, I'm Brittany and I'm here with David Gross with Condi Systems and he's here to talk to us today about the latest addition in die trans printers. Thank you, Brittany. Here's our new printer. It's the third in the generation, the GXE3300N. It's a small footprint, letter legal size, output, four cartridges, uh, low cost, fantastic quality printer. And we're going to take it out of the box here, set it up, give you a tour and show you all about it. Of course, the magic with the printer are these cartridges, which are the Sublejet R cartridges, which have been super successful with our GX7000 and the GX5050 printers. So let's uh, take it out of the bag here, Brittany. Okay, we're going to go ahead and take the tape off, so if you could help me with that, Brittany. Okay. It's an easy printer to set up, very fast. I want to give you a quick tour of the printer. These are where we put our cartridges. Holds four of the Sublejet R 30 milliliter cartridges. This is our paper tray. And uh, get a little shot of it here. The paper tray is adjustable for letter and legal size paper. And I'm going to show you how to adjust the paper tray. This printer holds letter and legal size paper. And we push these two tabs inward. And then we can expand the paper tray, lock them back. And that way we can hold both letter and legal size paper. We use this to frame the paper, and then this is our backstop. The papers that this printer supports are our Ditrans SPP paper, and this is a letter, and this is legal. And then it also supports the brand new TextPrint R paper, which also is available in letter and legal. All these papers are excellent papers uh, for use, and if you look at our sublimation instructions, they'll tell you which paper we would recommend depending on which substrate. Also, I want to show you the two new papers we have which are cut for mug transfers. These allow easy mug transfers because the paper is already pre-cut to go right on the mug. We have mug 11 paper and mug 15 paper. Okay. Another point to remember with this printer and all the Ricos is that when you put paper in the paper tray, we want to print, put the print side face down. So the print side goes face down. Other features, Brittany, let's turn it around here so we can show you folks the back of it. In the back here, this printer supports USB and it supports also Ethernet. USB is probably the way most folks will want to hook up the printer, but if you want to do it, attach it to your network, it's no problem. The, the network interface is already built in. This printer also has a duplex unit that is installed in the printer. And the duplex unit is uh, obviously for printing on both sides of the paper. We're not going to be using this for duplex for, for sublimation, but the duplex unit does need to be in the printer for it to work. Uh, Brittany, an accessory that I think is quite interesting that goes along with the mug paper quite well is what we call the bypass tray. It snaps on the back of the printer and it gives you an extra paper source, which is quite valuable for the mug paper. So if we'll turn it around here and our mug paper, we can put this mug paper directly in the tray, and we've got a great source um, for this type paper. In this particular tray, we, we put the paper with the print side face up. A couple of other accessories to talk about real quick is everybody, of course, will need a USB cable if you're going to hook it up USB, and um, a great software product that goes along with the printer is called Harvey Head Cleaner. What Harvey Head Cleaner does is for folks that aren't using the printer every day, it'll do a test print on the printer, keeping the printer healthy. Printers are very much like a car that you never drive. If you never drive it or never use it, you're asking for problems. So this is a small price to pay for a little insurance to keep your printer healthy. If we open the top cover of the printer here, we can see a little bit of the ink lines that are inside, four ink lines for four colors. And what the, the point in showing you this is that when we put our very first set of cartridges in the printer and turn it on, the ink that's in these cartridges is going to be pumped into these ink lines as it finally reaches the printhead. So your yield on your first set of cartridges will be a fair bit lower than on subsequent cartridges. So each cartridge for this printer holds about 30 milliliters of ink you can expect to consume about 12 milliliters of ink on charging the printer. Now, Brittany, let's, uh, let's go ahead and set it up. Okay. 
Okay, one, uh, one thing to point out, Brittany, is there's an ink collector unit in the printer. And what this unit does is it collects the waste ink that the printer consumes as we're doing a cleaning or just normal processing. So this is where that unit is located. Um, it's probably wise to have one on hand, um, but depending on how much you print, it'll determine how often you need to change it. The printer will give you a warning um, when the ink collector unit life is low. Okay, let's go ahead and install the cartridges. We've got four cartridges, so if you can help me take them out of the, the bag here. And we're going to install them. Each slot is marked. Cartridge goes in, snaps, easy to put in. And uh, I recommend not replacing a cartridge until the printer actually says the cartridge is empty. Do not replace cartridges when they say low. Let's go ahead and power it up and we'll start the ink charge. The ink charge is going to take a few minutes. The display will keep us informed about how it's doing. And this is a one-time thing in the life of the printer. So we're ready to power up. Okay, you'll see the message loading ink and we've got five minutes to wait. While it's loading ink and pumping the ink through those tubes, uh, here are the common questions that people want to know about the printer and that is, will it work with my PC or my Mac? With the drivers and profiles that we have, we should be able to cover pretty much any environment. On the PC, we cover Windows 2000, XP, Vista, Windows 7, both 32 and 64 bits. On the Mac, pretty much any version of the OS from 10.1 on. on. The, the speed of the printer and the quality is phenomenal. Um, you can expect to print a letter size full coverage piece of paper in about 25 seconds. Um, as far as cost of ownership for this printer, um, you're talking about for, for a letter size uh, full coverage page about 50 cents plus the cost of paper. So it's a quite economical printer. When I first started doing my measurements on the gel printers, what I found was that the gel uses a concentrated ink. And so one milliliter of the gel ink is roughly equivalent to three milliliters of Epson ink, meaning that the printer is much more efficient and therefore that puts the cost of ownership of this printer uh, and the other gel printers at roughly half of what we expect on the Epson printers with bulk ink. I also recommend that you keep the printer turned on all the time. There's really not a good reason to turn it off, and if you do turn it off and on, I think you're, all you're doing is wasting ink. So that's my recommendation. Okay, Brittany, now the printer's charged. It says ready on the display. Now we're going to put some paper in the printer. So if you let me pull it out, and we're going to put the paper in it. You always load the paper so that it's at the front edge of the tray, and then we're going to use our backstop like that. So that's how the paper should look. So we're loading the paper portrait mode, we're loading it with the bright white side face down. We're putting plain paper in the tray right now because we're going to test the printer and we don't need to use our sublimation paper for that. Okay, so we'll put it back in. Okay, now to test the printer, we can either do that at the computer or we can do it from the front panel of the printer. We're going to do it through the front panel. So we push the menu key. Now we're going to push the down arrow key till we see maintenance and then we're going to push the enter key three times. One, two, three. Well, Brittany, our test results are good. Our nozzle check's good. We're ready to go to the website to download our installation software. It's at condi.com. Click on the support tab. Click on the RICO banner and you'll see a link there that says download the installation software. You will need to be a member of PartnerNet which I know you are, so if you're not, you can sign up right there on the website. You'll need your PartnerNet ID to run the installer program. For Macintosh folks and others, call and we'll walk you through the downloading the driver and ICC profile. All right. Well, thank you. We've got a wonderful new printer and um, do appreciate it. All right, well, thank you. This is David Gross and Brittany Anderson with Condi Systems and thank you for joining us.